welcome to the University of Nebraska Lincoln Food Systems Summit. Um, I am uh, Nancy Williams. I serve in the capacity of co-founder and CEO for No More Empty Pots, and I am one of the community partners supporting uh, the effort of the Food Summit. I am here to introduce the Food Access Series. There are two other speakers, Cecilia Saavedra and John Porter. Um, please stick around after this presentation and check out what they uh, have to share around uh, their perspectives and experiences in food access. My focus today is to talk about food access and abundance. Um, I like to talk about um, abundance because it really is a mindset that helps me to be centered and consider the resources that are available to me as well as uh, caring for the people that are around me. And uh, that's important because there are many things that I care about and there are many things uh, that I cannot do by myself. Uh, having equitable access to healthy food is one of those things that I care deeply about. Uh, one, because of how I grew up, uh, having easy access to food because we grew most of the food that we ate, uh, but also because I live in a community where I have neighbors uh, and people that I know who experience food insecurity. And that is something that should not happen uh, in our community with our neighbors ever on a local scale and on a global scale, because there are an abundance of resources and the availability of food, but it is because of how we choose to engage in the distribution of the food, uh, the production of the food, and uh, many things within both our local and global food system that creates these uh, opportunities where uh, we don't get to experience the abundance at the same level. So when I, when I think about abundance, I think about the natural world and how in nature, if you were to you know, take a walk on a trail or uh, uh, through the forest or in the woods or uh, in, anywhere where there is a naturally occurring environment, there is, there, there is an abundance of, of life, um, flora and fauna, if it's not been impacted you know, by humans, because we have a way of behaving in an extractive manner uh, where we are not considering that we need to ensure that we are sharing beyond ourselves, that we are making sure that everyone has access to the resources that are available and that we are considering that we are not just consuming in this moment, but we are consuming beyond this moment and supporting the life, uh, both flora and fauna beyond ourselves. And that is one way to demonstrate and to experience abundance. Uh, when I am, am thinking about uh, gardens, especially uh, in late summer, August, September, and you think about how much food is coming out, especially if you're growing zucchini, it seems like nowhere that I have heard of in, in the world where everyone knows what to do with all the zucchini that they ever produce. There are many ways uh, uh, to use it. Uh, we just have to, one, not think that we have to use it ourselves, but find ways to share it and push that resource throughout the value chain. Uh, it can go to neighbors. It could go to uh, um, a, um, a pantry. It could go to a soup kitchen. It could be, be sold for profit so you can use that money for something else. It's it's really about the mindset and the approach that you take. So you can think, think about um, whether uh, you have enough or whether you have more than enough, uh, and then you can share that among, among the groups of people that, that you um, have access to and that you work with. And if you take a simple example of a glass that has uh, an eight ounce glass that has four ounces of water in it, um, many of us will look at it and we will usually have a couple of opinions. Uh, we could think of it as half full or we could think of it as half empty. And both of those opinions are true. And the amount of liquid in it is factual. It is four ounces. It is considered half. Uh, when you think about the ratios, 
but our perspective on whether it's half full or half empty is based on how we see things and how we see the world. So an abundant mindset may take the half full um, viewpoint because that allows us to see the potential for something greater uh, and allows us to uh, take the position that there is more, there is enough, that this is what I have right now, and that it is doesn't mean that that's all I'm going to ever have. And the possibility of that four ounces could be that the other four went to serve a greater purpose. So it's how we think about it and how we go about it. Uh, another way that I've seen um, abundance spoken of is uh, extractive versus living. And so extractive, we are taking something, we're using it once, and we're not considering what happens after that. It's at this moment is very short-term thinking. Uh, whereas a living model is considering how do you go about extracting it so that you're not harming uh, the environment or um, the whatever you're taking this from at the moment. How will it be used? And then use it in a way that it has multiple uses and that you're considering the future um, as well as the present. Uh, when you, you consume and use this resource and you try to find a way that you can make it circular so that it feeds back into the system and that you get even more from that resource because it is a living and caring way to go about using it. When I think about people who um, practice uh, living uh, abundantly, I, um, especially this time of year, I think about uh, Fannie Lou Hamer and how she was a civil rights activist, she was a farmer, um, and she was a sharecropper, but she believed in equality, she believed in equity, and when she was fighting for voting rights for Black people, she was also fighting for the rights of Black people and all of her neighbors uh, to have equitable access to food and affordable housing. Um, she helped to start a co-op in Sunflower County, Mississippi, and there were, she had multiple uh, people. There were several uh, people from different backgrounds that were a part of this because she was more concerned about the human condition and the importance of having access to healthy food than she was uh, just about growing food and making sure that there was food available. She wanted food available for everyone. Um, I read that she was responsible for ensuring that there were over 200 affordable housing units added uh, at that time um, in the late 60s, early 70s uh, in Sunflower County. So that that is an example of someone who believes in justice, uh, in, in reform, in policy, uh, in advocacy, but also in abundance, in ensuring that of the resources that are available that we all have access to them because when one of us isn't free, the other of us isn't free. We all have to be in this together because we don't get to equity and equality until we ensure that we have it for ourselves and our neighbors. Um, that is just um, a, a little snippet of how I think about abundance and uh, how it intersects with food access. Um, each of us deserves to have access to healthy, affordable food. And we deserve that for our neighbor because when our neighbor is cared for, we are also caring for ourselves. And when we can think abundantly about all of our processes that are involved in the food system and ensuring that each of us have access to healthy food and that we are using those resources responsibly for today and tomorrow, we can get to a place where we all have what we need in the way that we need it and that we are also uh, in a living and caring model of economics and, and living. Please stay tuned to listen to uh, and watch Cecilia and John. Uh, reach out uh, and ask questions if you have any and connect with other people in the summit. We are thrilled that you are here and we hope that you come back and check out the other sessions. Thanks a lot. Bye.